In this episode, I'll be restoring this 17-inch black debutante from 1960. Hey guys, welcome back to another Predictor Palooza installment. Still have a lot of predictors to go through, but I'm going to be changing up the format a bit to pick up the pace. Probably just one video per set. And I'm just going to touch on the highlights or lowlights. So in this case, this is Chase's debutante. I did do a video when I did a triage on it. There was an odd repair where they cut out a bottom portion of the chassis so they get the circuit board. And one of the traces had burned up. Turns out it was the filament supply for a couple tubes in this area. But otherwise, everything looked fine, looked stock. Uh, so I just went through and did the usual thing. I removed the board, replaced the parts, put it back in, rebuilt the power supply. And now I'm getting ready for first power-up. I already powered it up without the fusible resistor in place. So it was just filament supply. All the tubes lit up. And now I put it in, but I remembered something before I powered it up. And that is, as, as he had uh, told me, because he started to work on the set himself, or thought he would, but then he decided to have me do it. But he did point out one thing, is that um, one of the grounding stakes had broken off. So I need to replace that, because these little stakes that come up and bend over and get soldered down are not just there to hold the board in place, they provide continuity for the ground circuitry. So, and on some cases the ground traces go all over, so I don't know for sure that that ground trace is critical to some of the circuit functioning, but uh, it's a good assumption to make that yes, it is, it is critical. So we're going to get in there with a heavy piece of bus wire and uh, re-establish that connection. These are made out of steel, I believe, that's tin-plated. And uh, you flex them a few times and they tend to get metal fatigue and break off. But not a big deal, not a big deal. Actually, you know what I think I'll use? is some desoldering braid that's been used up and it's completely saturated with solder. Copper's a great conductor, it's fairly thick, so I'll just cut off a piece of that and tack it in place. All right, that repair has been made. Let's give it a try. Current draw seems normal. Tubes are warming up, drawing more current. We have his side of the speaker. Now his picture tube tested a little weird. I think there was a G1 short or something like that that I couldn't clear up. Or maybe it was an HK short. So I'm not really surprised that we're not seeing the last of And uh, I believe she uh wants to go with me replacing the picture tube if we have to. Well, that's curious. When I turn the set off, we do get a bit of something on the face of the CRT. Huh. Well, I am going to grab a known good one from one of my sets. It has a damaged plastic cover, but otherwise it's stock and it works. Uh, and I'll swap out the CRT for that one, just to eliminate some variables about what the problem might be. Okay, here it is with a substitute CRT.
Okay. Well, good and bad. Good that we have a raster. The bad idea that pitch two doesn't work, so now we know that there's something up with it. So the set is playing quite well with the substitute CRT with the exception of uh, one major issue which is uh, we've got fold over at the bottom and it turns out that's because the linearity control doesn't work. It is the original and they often have problems but usually they fail open. This one isn't open but um, I don't seem to be able to adjust the value. It seems to be stuck at around 750 ohms or so so we'll be replacing that. Uh, and then I looked back at the original triage video of this and some photos that I'd taken and I remembered this picture tube, the original one that came with this set, has a heater cathode short. Uh, those, generally speaking, cannot be fixed. The cathode is a metal tube and the filament, the heater is inside of it, it's like a corkscrew and if from rough handling or manufacturing defect or just age the filament uh, slips a little and touches the cathode they basically kind of get welded together or just because of things shifting the, the metal is making contact there's really no way to dislodge that if you try blasting it with voltage or current you're likely going to blow the filament open rather than fix the short um, there's not a whole lot of clearance between the filament and the cathode sleeve, so uh, there's really not much hope there. Even if it were possible to do it, I wouldn't trust it for working for any particular length of time. Alright, so what can you do? One is if you've got a device like this, uh, this is a rather <laughs> huge one. Uh, this is, um, well, it can do a number of things, but one function this can do is it's an isolation transformer for the filament on a pitcher tube. Um, you're still going to have a heater cathode short, but this will at least isolate it from the rest of the set so you can modulate um, the signal going to uh, the cathode. And it's important because it, on this particular type of design, the video signal goes to the cathode. So you can imagine when you have the cathode shorted to the filament, sort of being grounded, grounded through the filament. Uh, uh, so you, using this will isolate it from the rest of the set such that you can have the video signal modulating the filament <laughs> voltage and I've never seen it actually done but I've heard that if it works it's not going to work very well because of the extra capacitance and ductance and not to mention the 60 hertz that's going uh, through the uh, filament. And I already mentioned it to the owner, and he indicated he would like me to put in a good used one if I happen to have one. And, well, yes. So what I will propose to him doing is I simply will take this pitcher tube out of the damaged cabinet and swap it into his. We obviously know it works. I've used it on a number of sets. It, it tests fine. It works fine. It's used. No, it does not test as good as a new one, but... I'll give him a bit of a price break on that. So uh, I'll continue to tweak things. I'll fix the linearity control. I need to check the tubes. I need to clean up the tuner a bit. But otherwise, this is another case of, aside from the pitcher tube problem, after rebuilding it, it just works. It works quite well. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll rig something up because I'm sure you're curious to see what it would look like if we isolate the picture tube filament, and I certainly am. Now, if you're wondering, why don't I just plug this in and use it? Different base. This is an oddball base type. I don't even have any picture tubes that use this base. Um, could build an adapter, um, but I don't think I even have any sockets that would plug into this. Um, could just tack some wires onto it. Anyway, that, yes, I could bodge something that uses this, but I think I have a simpler approach, which is to simply dig up a 6.3 volt filament transformer. I think I might even be able to use this guy right here. 
Yeah, sure, we'll use this. I'll just use one of the filament windings. You know, the 0.6 or the 1.2 amp filament windings. And I'll wire up the primary, and this will serve as an isolation transformer. We're just going to hook the uh, picture tube filament up to this. Oh, this is from an old experiment. I'll remove all that stuff. Now, I was also thinking that I didn't explain that very well. The real problem, the reason why we won't, weren't getting any raster with that heater cathode short is because the cathode needs to be at a certain bias. In fact, the brightness control sets the bias on the cathode. And with the cathode essentially being shorted to the heater, which is basically ground, it's going to throw that way off. That needs to be at um, several dozens of volts. Um, and so it's being driven hard into cutoff, I think is what's happening. Alright, first proof of concept I'm using a good CRT uh, with this filament transformer, as if some of you are probably thinking, hey, CRT doesn't run on 6.3 volts, you're right, it runs on 2.68, so I had to add a 10 ohm series dropping resistor. 8 ohms is a little bit closer, but higher line voltages, want a little safety overhead, so only 10 ohms. Anyways, so I disconnected the ground and the filament supply going to the CRT, that's these two wires, and I'm running them directly to this, which is plugged in to uh, AC outlets, and the TV is hooked up as before, and uh, it's working basically the same as it was before. Just have the vertical fold-over issue because of the bad linearity control, but otherwise it seems to be all right. So now let's try with the... Uh, Heater cathode shorted CRT. Here we go with the shorted CRT. So before we didn't get anything. There was no glow on the CRT face at all. And it looks like we still are not getting any. And then when I turned it off, we would get a glow. Or a little... Yeah. Wow, that made no difference whatsoever. That is not at all what I expected. Huh. That is weird. Video hooked up, filament completely isolated. Hmm. Well, <laughs> hmm. I gotta think about that a little bit. Uh, meanwhile, I did get uh, the go ahead from the owner of this set to swap out the CRTs. That's a little disappointing. So, unless I'm missing something here, using the isolation transformer like th this guy would not have made any difference. That really should have worked. So, I'm thinking there might be something else up with this picture tube. I'm curious to see uh, when I take this all apart uh what is actually in there and examine the electron gun and maybe the thing's been rebuilt maybe it should be running on 6.3 volts uh, maybe it's a different crt type uh i don't know i don't know boy that's a shame it, it's an original it looks super clean um now i'm starting to wonder maybe there's something up with this like somebody tried to rejuvenate it or over voltage the filament and maybe the filament's not just shorted at the cathode but it's damaged in some regards so it has much lower emissions than it should um, so even when it, we get that little glimmer when I turn the set off it's still awfully dim also I noticed when um, when I uh, went to take this out I had it discharge the high voltage and it had a significant charge built up meaning that electrons were not flowing around when this um, when it sets fully operational like when I use the good CRT 
when I turn it off, the high voltage drains away and there's virtually nothing left uh, to discharge. With this, this was a, <laughs> a sizable spark, so uh, yeah, I think something's not quite up to snuff. What I'm going to try doing is measuring the cold filament resistance on this and compare it to a good CRT of the same type and see if they match or not. All right, so in addition to swapping out the CRT, I do have a bit of work to do on this. Something I hadn't noticed, unfortunately, when I had the board out, is that the core of this horizontal ringing coil is cracked, and I can't rotate it. Luckily, I do have a spare because I save everything. So on this nasty old board I bought off of eBay years ago, we do have a spare coil with... Uh, oh man, that core is cracked too. Or chipped anyways. Well, if that one rotates, I'll swap it out. Because here's the issue. For the horizontal hold to work, everything's at, at the extreme. The horizontal frequency, the horizontal hold control. I don't like that. I'd like to have things more in the center of their uh, rotation. Uh, now one good thing is that the uh, there's a cutout in the metal chassis right below this point so I can easily uh, get that out. Uh, I think I do have one or two other spare boards I could get that uh, uh, swap that coil out with. Uh, and also I need to replace the linearity control. Here is what one looks like or it's similar to this. Um, not much to it. The body is one end and then there's a wiper for the other and it's wire wound. Uh, really prone to breaking I think because they're all exposed and it's the piece of metal rubbing against resistance wire and uh, just not not a good design. As I've done on other chassis I'm going to replace it with a uh, type J very reliable military grade potentiometer Alrighty, the used picture tube has been transplanted into the debutante shell. While I had it apart, I cleaned up the inside. Now I'm putting it back together. Next up is to put the metal band back on. Uh, then we'll do a final power-up test and start putting this thing back together. All right, rebuilt CRT and housing all back together, hooked up to the set. Went over everything again, removed corrosion from the high voltage box, replaced the line cap, uh, the capacitor across the AC line, replaced the one cap on top of the tuner, cleaned and lubed it, checked those two tubes, they're good. I think I've done as much as I can. <laughs> so, time to put this back in the cabinet and then I'll make all the final adjustments. So oh, I did uh, replace and mount a new uh, linearity control down in there. So I know that needs to be tweaked a little bit. I do that with a test pattern generator. Alright, things are looking good. Let's take a look at the back for a bit. I was able to scavenge a high voltage box cover from parts chassis. Got that installed. Now, unfortunately, this back, well, it's fortunate that we have the back that's in great shape, but some key stuff is missing. There's no power cord and no antenna terminals. What's left of the antenna input is just uh, some twin lead with uh, the ends broken off. Normally, that would come through uh, one of these slots, and there'd be some screw terminals back here to attach an antenna. So, we got to do something about that, and I need to put a power cord of some sort. I do have a very limited supply of replacement power cords. This is basically the type we need. Uh, Non-polarized with a square end. It'll certainly plug into that. The trick is, well, how do you get it into this? Um, there originally was a piece of metal. Notice there's a slot in there. So you put it through the back and then this piece of steel was sort of like a fork and it would 
go in there and hold this in place. Also, I think it was a bit longer because when I tried this and put the back on, it's just barely hanging on to the pins. So I might want to carve some of this back or come up with some sort of other alternate solution. I can't put the cord in through from the other side. It wouldn't fit. I could enlarge that hole, which I'd prefer not to do, but I'll rig up something. As for the antenna terminals, this is what the antenna uh, terminal should look like. The twin lead would have uh, been terminated with a couple metal pins that would have come through the slot and then fit into here. And then the internal antenna would fit in on the other side, or you could attach an external input on these screw terminals. These days, this is what people typically use, which converts 75 ohm coax to 300 ohm. Unbalanced. Um, so one thing I could do is simply take one of these and run it through here and hardwire it. The only problem with that is if I hardwire it, you won't be able to take the back off. It'll get hung up on the wiring. So uh, I'll see if I can rig up some kind of disconnect terminals on it, uh, mobile X pins or something, so that you can both have a a secure place to hook up a signal, but also be able to take the back off. Here's a look at the set all put back together and cleaned up. One more down. I uh, still have one more 17 inch set of Siesta from the initial batch of 17s. I uh, have a bunch more 21s to do including uh, some more pedestal, holiday, and then some tandem sets, and then circle back and uh, finish off a few more 17s that came in later. Um, that might wrap up Predictapalooza for the time being. <laughs> I have plenty more other sets to get to. Hope you enjoyed this look at restoring a Philco uh, debutante from 1960.